Hey man, thanks for listening to today's episode about man cards. This is a brand new resource that I am creating with today's guest, Henry Brown. You can get your own copy of man cards at getyourmancards.com. This is a card deck of conversation starters for men that make it easier for you to go deep and have really meaningful friendships. So I'm really excited to introduce Henry to everybody because uh, he has been a huge part of Husband Material, a huge gift to this community. He's a friend and he's awesome. So thanks for listening to our conversation. Basically today we are going to talk about this new resource. We're going to talk about friendship and actually play the game and actually use the man card so you can get a taste of what it's like. Welcome to Husband Material. Today I get to hang out with one of my best friends in the world and the man who is behind the scenes at Husband Material welcoming each new member to the Husband Material community and all around an amazing man of God, Henry Brown. Hey, Drew. It's good to be here, man. We are going to talk today about a brand new resource that we have created together called Man Cards, Conversation Starters for Men. And before we get into that, though, what do people need to know about you and your story? Um... I'm a ministry leader. Uh, recently, I've done ministry my entire career uh, since college. Most of that has been with teenagers. Uh, the last eight years, or I guess maybe six years, has been with adults. And uh, I moved eight years ago to care for my mom, uh, who was suffering from dementia. And she passed away about seven months ago. And uh, that's been a long journey. Um, but it was in the midst of that, that I began my recovery. So, and how did that happen? Um, you know, porn had been something that I struggled with my entire adult life. Um, it was something that was, uh, consistent, but it wasn't constant. Uh, I'd shared that with some friends of mine in my twenties and they said, well, we'll pray for you. And so I just chalked it up to being a spiritual warfare issue. And because it wasn't constant, uh, that was the story I told myself, that this was just the thorn in my flesh, and it was something that I dealt with, and um, it was just this binge and purge cycle. And it might be a couple months, it might be a year, uh, it varied, and I just didn't pay too much attention to it. Then I uh, went through a lot of stuff with my mom, and then COVID hit, and I'm an extrovert, and so I love being around people. Uh, even just to go to the mall and hang out and be around people. Um, I don't even have to talk to them, just to be there and to feed off that energy. Uh, and so COVID just really put me in a dark spot. And there wasn't a lot to do. And I'd never been a podcast listener before uh, the pandemic. Uh, but then I found this podcast by this dude I'd never heard of named Drew Boa. And I was like, wow, he's saying stuff that I've just thought before. Um, kind of like things that the way you say it is, is that men aren't addicted to porn, boys are. Uh, and in my mind, I was like, you know, porn's kind of a phase and um, it people shouldn't get stuck there. Uh, I didn't consider myself stuck there, but that was just kind of in my thought. And I was like, <laughs> wow, this guy's really saying some cool stuff. And so I listened to every episode that was available in one weekend. And then the new episode that came out that following Monday, I don't even remember who it was, said something like an addiction is something that you return to over and over again, no matter the length between episodes. And I thought, dang, I've got a problem. Uh, and that is what started my recovery right there. Wow. That's so cool that you are now speaking on the podcast that started your recovery. Yes. So... Um, and I don't know, you know, it's one of those things. I don't know without the pandemic, uh, without being with my mom all the time that I wouldn't have been looking for podcasts or something to fill that time with. I don't know that I would have found it and I wouldn't be stuck where I was two years ago. So that was two years ago. Since then, how has husband material helped you heal? Um, when I first reached out to you after that podcast, you didn't have any availability, and you recommended me to a friend of yours, Cynthia Sam. Uh, and I went through deep clean first. And then you had availability and I did group coaching. And the two programs really worked well together for me. 
um, probably because I'd been in denial for so long. Um, and so I got to figure out what my issue was uh, and then what were the stories behind my issue. Uh, and so they dovetail together really well and have just really stuck with that. Uh, some of the guys that I met in my husband material small group, uh, we continued to meet on. We met for nine months straight. We read through Unwanted together uh, and met weekly doing that and have just continued. And so that's how that's been. Yeah. And after you joined the husband material community back when it was a Facebook group, you were so consistently encouraging, inspiring, praying for men, uh, and really being a leader that you joined me in leading the community. And I, I hear your dog there. That's awesome. You want to talk about your dogs? Yeah. Um, and then, in the midst of my mom's recovery, we had a family that lived with us for two years. Uh, and one of them was an infant. And so my mom could still hold her at that point. But when she got big enough that my mom couldn't hold her anymore, I wanted to find a replacement. And so I bought a Shorky, which is a half Shih Tzu, half Yorkie, um, which generally they're really good dogs. They're not stuck up like Shih Tzus and they're not yappy like Yorkies. Uh, but there was a noise outside just then. Uh, so that my mom would have something that she could hold. Uh, like she used to hold the baby hmm. and I didn't want the dogs to be alone. So I got ended up getting two, uh, not just one. And so um, the people that were living with us named the girl dog Bella and having worked in youth ministry for so long, it was only appropriate that the boy would be named Edward uh, <laughs> after twilight, but we call him Eddie. So Bella and Eddie are my two dogs. Awesome. You have been someone who to me embodies the compassion of Jesus and caring for your mom and caring for men in the husband material community and even in caring for Bella and Ed <laughs> and uh, and your godson too, um, mm -hmm. which is a whole other story. Um, but in order to help men go deeper and truly connect with each other, we created something that we are calling man cards. Henry, what yes. are the man cards? Um, you know, there's card decks are really popular to generate conversation. And there's card decks for families. There's card decks for couples. There's card decks for friends. But I haven't noticed any card decks out there that are specifically for men. Uh, and a lot of uh, porn addiction is driven, I believe, by isolation and loneliness. And men are very lonely. Um one of the husband material coaches said the other day that one of the Jesus biggest miracles was having 12 close friends in his thirties and um, men just don't have close friends. And this is a way to help develop those friendships. And so we have that and the cards get deeper and deeper as you go and you can take it as far as you want. Think of it like going swimming that you can dip your toe in the shallow end to test the waters and as you get more comfortable, you can go deeper and deeper. Exactly. So in this deck of 52 cards, we have organized them into four categories. The surface, all the way down to the deep end. And so you can choose the level of vulnerability that you feel safe to engage uh, when you're getting to know a group of guys for the first time. Maybe you want to stay in the lower numbers of the cards. And as you go on and as you get more courageous, you can talk about some of the higher numbers on the cards, which tend to be more sexually vulnerable. Yes, that's right. So today on the show, we are going to introduce this resource, uh, give you a little example of what it looks like, how you can use it by actually playing the game. I can do that. Okay. All right. Let's play. Let's use the man cards. Okay, Drew, I'm going to let you draw a number, pick a number, and then I'll read you the question from the card. All right, I'm going to start with one of the questions on the surface. Let's go with number six. Number six. When do you feel loved and supported? Mm. Wow. That's a big one for me because I often do get messages of love and support. And so I feel like the way I answer this question is going to influence people and they might just reach out and love me and support me in this way. Um, you know what I really love? 
this is part of my heart that is already going to create so much connection and vulnerability. I love northern elephant seals. I love them. I went and visited them recently on my retreat as I start writing a new book, which is very exciting. And, uh, and the elephant seals were on the way and I went to visit them and I spent a couple hours there and loved every minute of it. Uh, if you want to hear more about why I love elephant seals, you can go back to the episode that says the beauty of elephant seals. And so, you know what, if anybody sends me a message talking about elephant seals, <laughs> um, I will feel so loved and supported in my unique, weird self. For my birthday this year, my wife, Rebecca, got me a pair of socks with elephant seals on them. <laughs> and I wore those socks when I visited the seals. <laughs> awesome. I also have a little uh, card. It's a postcard here uh, that I look at almost every day uh, that says advice from an elephant seal. This is how I try to live my life. Spend time at the beach. Don't be afraid to dive deep. Be well-traveled and go home to rest and renew. Awesome advice. That's my advice from an elephant seal. Maybe that's more than you bargained for, but I feel so loved and supported whenever anybody sends me anything to do with elephant seals or talks about elephant seals. Uh, that's a shortcut to my heart. <laughs> that's awesome, Drew. And on these cards, there's different things at the bottom, different quotes or tips. And this one says, if we can share our story with someone who responds with empathy and compassion, shame can't survive. And that's a quote from author Brene Brown. And so you'll find different things like that on these cards yeah. as you go through them. And that's another great insight. Um, if you don't feel very loved and supported, um, can you share your story with somebody who responds with empathy and compassion? Mm-hmm. And these cards are full of tips like that. Uh, one for every card, a tip or a challenge or an insight that can help you with whatever the topic is. That's awesome, Drew. Thanks, Henry. <laughs> I definitely didn't expect to go there. And that's probably a longer answer than I would usually give. But hey, we're on a podcast, so we're here to talk. That's right. Now it's your turn. What's your number? Uh, number 12. Number 12. If you know your love languages, how do you prefer to receive love? And how do you prefer to express love? Yes. Um, I pre prefer to receive love with quality time. And... Uh, I think that goes along with the extrovertedness being recharged. Uh, and I prefer to give love through acts of service. And so I know that sometimes that can be a mismatch. Uh, when you try to give love to someone in a way they don't receive it, they don't see what you do. And so if someone doesn't receive love through acts of service, uh, it can be very frustrating. Uh, and you've got to learn those love languages so that you can do things that are meaningful to them. Yeah. So what I'm hearing is that if somebody spends quality time with you, you feel so loved. Yes. But you might not necessarily try to initiate and spend quality time with somebody. You're probably more likely to do something for them. That's right. Okay. And if, and if I was going to do an act of service for you, you'd appreciate it, but not as much as really good quality time. That's right. That is so helpful. That's going to give me a, a way to be a better friend to you. So it's very, it's one of those things that some friends of mine modeled. Um, the husband did acts of service all the time and his wife would get frustrated and he didn't understand why. And I could understand why because and he figured this out on his own. I didn't have any input in it, but it was just interesting because her love language was quality time and he would wash her car and take the trash out and do all this stuff for her, make sure that her car was filled up all the time. And she just totally didn't see it. Um, and so it was interesting seeing that dynamic work out with them uh, and how he figured that out. 
uh, and seeing how that would work. So that's been something that I've tried to find out in, in relationships is how to match that up so that people don't get frustrated. You don't do anything for me. I do stuff for you all the time. What are you talking about? But that's not how it works. So, Yeah. Well, this concept of love languages is great. And it, the challenge for this card says to learn more about your love language, take the love language quiz at five love .com, the number five love languages.com. And you can go deeper into that topic. And our friend Cynthia Sam also has this great concept of loving yourself with your love languages. Um, yes. Which is so cool. Awesome. Well, you are you ready to go to the next level? Sure. Okay. So for my next card, I choose number 14. Number 14. What boundaries do you have around technology? Oof. Oh, man. <laughs> this one's actually really vulnerable for me um, because that's an area of my life where I don't feel fully healed. I don't feel like I'm in a, in a super healthy spot, but one boundary I have is not checking my phone or going on to a laptop or computer before I'm able to read my Bible and have breakfast. So for me personally, it really helps to have the first message I see be from God, whether that's through that 40 day devotional for men that you gave me, Henry, which I am currently reading right now, or a Psalm or whatever chapter of the book that I'm in that day for the Bible. I want that to be my first message. And I am fairly consistent with that. And the one where I really need to work on my boundaries is at night. So I, I feel like that's an area where I can lean into some discomfort and and have some more healthy boundaries for me at night so that I can connect with myself, connect with my family, and ultimately get to sleep without the residual effects of looking at a screen late at night, which are not good. No, get your brain going. Makes it harder to sleep. Yeah, and that's actually one of the major obstacles that often leads to some kind of unwanted behavior is being on technology late at night. So that is a danger zone for me. And the cool thing is, is technology has gotten smarter and is able to help us with that. I know that for me at 830, my phone goes into do not disturb mode, into sleep mode, uh, even though I don't go to bed at 830. But there's an alarm that goes off and I know that it's time to start my night routine. Ooh, that's uh, good. And my phone, um, unless you're in my favorites, uh, you can't. It doesn't ring through. It just goes to voicemail. I don't see the notification until the next morning. Man, I got to try that. I got to set an alarm. It's like bedtime for my phone. That would be great. Yeah. I think you have an iPhone. And on iPhone, yes. it is under the health setting. They moved it. And it's oddly under the health setting. But you can set a bedtime. And it'll put your phone automatically into that focus mode uh, from whatever time you set till the next morning. Awesome. I'm going to try that. Wow, this is productive. So... The challenge on this card is to create a simple plan for when, where, and how you will use your digital devices in a healthy way. And maybe that focus mode uh, is a way to do that. So. Yeah, I actually have do not disturb turned on for my phone all the time so that it doesn't buzz, it doesn't beep during the day. But that is one boundary that has really helped me is keeping it in do not disturb all the time. My simple plan for today is going to be setting a curfew and having an alarm to do the work of remembering that curfew. So, and the cool thing is, is even if you leave your phone and do not disturb Drew, you can set the curfew on your phone. And so it'll come up and remind you that it's 
getting close to time for bed. You're starting that nighttime routine. So you can use both at the same time. Awesome. What is your yeah. next choice? Henry, what card do you want? I'm going to go with number 17. 17. Ooh. What is one of your deepest longings? One of my deepest longings, and it took me a while to figure this out, is uh, I want to be remembered. I, want, I used to say I wanted to be needed, and I realized that there are ways that I don't want to be needed. Um, and so it's that I want to be remembered is more accurate way to describe that. Uh, kind of like you were talking about if somebody sends you something with elephant seals, mm -hmm. um, things that I'm interested in when people send me stuff, just random, uh, you know, like, uh, you can see the Lego sets behind me mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, if somebody saw that Lego's introducing a new set, like yesterday they announced this new loop roller coaster. And if somebody sent me that, that would really make me feel good because I'm being remembered. Somebody thought about me during the day when they didn't have to. Um, and just those kind of things that trigger those thoughts that, mm. I mean, they don't have to be really deep. They can just be really shallow, uh, but I've been remembered. And I think those lead to deeper conversations along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And that's related to one of your core experiences of being forgotten. Yes, it is. So, And I remember there was one time when um, you had shared a story about being forgotten. And, and I remembered that and I sent you something, uh, I think it was for your birthday um, and it was my way of saying, Hey, I remember you. When I was little, um, I was left out of a family photo and uh, very devastating for me. Uh, and you sent me a photo frame and I still don't have the photo that I want to put in there yet. I haven't figured that out, um, but it was very meaningful. And I even took the Amazon gift thing where you wrote on there and taped that to the back of it oh, uh, oh. that came in the box so i'll figure out what photo needs to go in there uh soon uh but i haven't done that yet so but on a related note one of the guys in our in the small group that i was in um sent me a text message after he watched encanto and said you need to watch this movie i thought of you um and the star of the show is left mm. out of a family photo. Mm. And so uh, being remembered in that way was very touching and meant a lot to me. Wow. And that's not only one of your deepest longings, that's also a strength of yours and maybe even a superpower. Like you remember people, you remember little details after a long period of time. <laughs> and And I'm consistently amazed by how you remember things from my life. Like what? Well, when my son was born, you sent me a teddy bear for him wearing a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey. Uh, That's right. Remembering that when I was a boy moving around so much, Toronto was my favorite place that I lived. And it will always have such a special place in my heart. I will always, always love Toronto. And you remember that and you gave something with Toronto on it to my son. And I've always called that his Henry bear. <laughs> that's funny. Um, you know, that's really weird because I lived in North Texas and so I enjoy hockey. I don't understand a lot about it, but I enjoy hockey. Uh, but one of my favorite games that I ever went to was the Dallas stars against the Maple Leafs. Um, and I got to sit on the glass behind the opposing goal. Uh, and so it was an incredible night. Isn't that interesting, the Toronto Maple Leafs? Uh, you know, you'd think it would be Maple Leaves for grammar, but it's not. It's just the Leafs. Yes, yeah, so they're just one leaf. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that is one example. I think another example, Henry, is like you remember some of these podcast episodes um, that happened over a year ago. And something that was said one time. 
or another thing is uh, you have a very strong memory and uh, and recollection of different community members and how they have been interacting as we are trying to manage this community and moderate and keep it safe for everybody so that we can be informed and and you also I think um, we're part of the the effort that we've made now to wish everybody a happy birthday on their birthday. Yeah, I haven't been as consistent with that as I would like, but um, I have worked on that some, yes. Yeah. yeah. And I can see how that would be a passion to make sure that no one is forgotten. So, yes. It's something we really emphasize at Husband Material is learning what is one of your deepest longings? What are your divine desires? And some other examples are listed on this card, card number 17, acceptance, adventure, affirmation, connection, being pursued, home, love, purpose, and safety. Yes. You know, I included the word home on that card because that's one of mine. Not having a home, not feeling like I belonged. And in some ways, husband material is the home that I created that I wanted. And it's a great home. Very welcoming. Thanks, Henry. You are you are a big reason for that. Wow, we're only in the first uh, <clears throat> two sections, and it already feels like a lot of connection is coming from this. Um, I think it's your turn. What card would you like to answer next? All right, now we're going even deeper. Hit me with card number 32. How do you feel about your relationship status? <sighs> My relationship status is married and I'm grateful to have Rebecca. I'm grateful to live every day with her. And also another part of me sometimes um, misses being single in the sense of having more capacity for friendship and my heart always goes out to single guys because I at one point in my life thought that I would be single forever even though I really wanted a girlfriend or or a wife that just felt impossible for me and so you will often hear this in the podcast whenever we're talking about sex or whenever we're talking about marriage I will often turn the conversation back and say and for single guys and for people who are not in a relationship because that will always be on my mind and it's possible that i may be single again um, as sad as it would be marriage doesn't always last whether due to divorce or death and and i'm very aware that there may come a time in life when i'm single again and when that happens, I hope that I'm able to grieve and also be grateful for whatever my relationship status will be. You know, that's one of the unique things about the husband material community. And I really appreciate about that because I'm single uh, and that you always have that perspective because a lot in Christian circles, being married is uh, like the goal, the end result. And, um, Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Um, it was another podcast, but it reminded me of you and Rebecca, because you said there was no one that you would rather do conflict with than her. Yeah. Um, and I thought that was amazing um, because you want to work through those things and where there are those ruptures, you want to make repair and you're not content to just leave it. And I think that shows a lot of love for her. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think that whatever stage of life we're in, we always have those mixed feelings that I really enjoy this, but sometimes I wish I could have a little bit of that. <laughs> yeah. So. Thank you, Henry. And there's another example of your remembering. Um, no, that's really cool how you do that. So. Thank you. I received that. This is a little bit of affirmation. And as we know, it's always more difficult to receive affirmation than to give affirmation. So. Henry, thank you so much. What is your next card? Uh, you're welcome. My next card will be number 38. 38. How has your family affected you, both positively 
and negatively. Uh, part of the positives is even when I was a little kid, when I wanted to go on a field trip, uh, they were like, you fill out the paperwork and you do this. So I feel like they raised me to be an adult um, in that regard of being able to accomplish things and figuring out how to do things. Uh, the negative side of that was, is that feelings didn't matter. Um, it was always, what do you know to be true and not, I'm sorry, you feel this way. It'll pass, blah, 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 blah. It was always, you know, that isn't true kind of a statement. Uh, and so that really caused me for years to really suppress what I felt for what I know what knew was true instead of sitting with the discomfort of the feeling. And you can see where that led you. Yes. A lot of what was behind my porn use was trying to soothe those feelings that I was uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. So you're able to appreciate the strength that came from your parents uh, giving you so much opportunity to, to become an adult and to learn how to do things. But I should say, and <laughs> feelings didn't matter. And the tip for this card says, use the word and. Um, for example, my parents met my physical needs and neglected my emotional needs. Right. That word and allows us to be grateful and to grieve, to really process both sides and to not say, um, but one of those sides is more important. That's right. And the thing is, is that uh, we live in a fallen world, in a sinful world, and none of us were raised by Jesus. Um, <laughs> and so uh, there's always going to be some area of life that was lacking. And it's okay to be honest about that um, as long as you're also honoring about the things that they did right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And that concept of honor and honesty comes from the book Unwanted that you mentioned earlier by Jay Stringer mm -hmm. and what a gift that is. Man, well, we're actually preaching a little bit. We're, we're telling people uh, <laughs> some important truths here. So, Drew, what's your next card? My next card is going to go all the way to the deep end. Okay. Card number 45. <laughs> What's okay. When are you most likely to feel triggered and why? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um, many of you know this. I get most triggered sexually when... I am around teenage girls because they are more likely to have braces and that is the sexual fetish that has always been a part of my fantasy life and the type of porn that I preferred. So it's very difficult for me when I learn that one of my cousins or uh, one of my family members who are younger, uh, get braces. Um, and now I've got to a point where that really doesn't shake me up or bother me at the same time. I have to be aware of it. I have to be conscious of it because, um, if I drift, that would take me into a place I don't want to go. Um, I need to be intentional about getting curious about, okay, where's this coming from and compassionate with myself and connected and courageously reaching out and talking to one of my friends, talking to another coach. Um, if I need to regulate, if I need to co-regulate really anything that relates to those middle school years, uh, can be very triggering for me. And another example, kind of an emotional trigger would be thinking about moving. I live in Santa Barbara. It's very expensive here and my family is growing and I don't know. I don't know if we can continue to live here. I don't know where we might live. So that has been very triggering for me to think about moving since moving is a big part of my trauma, especially the move 
that happened when I was 13 years old. Um, and, and that trauma is very connected to the sexual arousal and attraction towards braces and orthodontics, which was all over my world when I was 13. So that just went really deep, didn't it? It did. <laughs> what does the tip say? What does the challenge say for that one? Late at night, early in the morning, on a specific day of the week, with specific people at school, at work, etc. Yeah, and those are all examples of triggers. Um, on a lighter note, if you do move, um, we got to make sure we take a good photo of your background because I don't know that it would be the same mm. without uh, your current office. We can put it on a uh, banner to put up behind <laughs> you so that <laughs> even in a different location, it'll look the same. Yeah. This little wooden garage has become a healing home for men all over the country and sometimes even around the world. And I'm really going to miss it. I'm probably going to weep whenever we say goodbye to this place. Yeah. So definitely a cool place. Me and the spiders. You know, one time I was on a coaching call with somebody and a spider comes descending into the field of view right in front of my face between my face and the camera oh wow and he wiped it away <laughs> during the call <laughs> he's like did you just wipe away a spider yeah i did mm -hmm. that's awesome <laughs> i have a picture actually of me with my first coaching client before i had this space and i was sitting on top of a laundry machine with my computer on a stack of stools and books and things to keep it high enough to be by my face. And it, it's, a, it's a picture of like where it all began in the laundry room. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a big face when it's virtual. And whenever we do move, I will try my best to upgrade it to be even more accommodating and welcoming. Henry, it's your turn. Are you ready for the deep end? I'm going to go with number 42. 42. When were you first exposed to porn and how did that exposure happen? Uh, I was 10 and a guy in my class at school, uh, his dad was working away and he intercepted his play, uh, Playboy magazine and brought it to school um it was miss february it was it was a february issue um and he brought that to school and um i don't know that anybody got too long of a look at it at that point um but i do remember it ended up in the trash and everybody was in trouble <laughs> from that henry how did that impact you it was something that I knew was wrong. I didn't look at it too long at the time. Um, but it was still intriguing. Um, and so for whatever reason, I had a good sense of right and wrong. And it was over a decade later before porn use was something that was consistent. So, um, but it definitely started something. Yeah. So. It planted a seed that would later grow. Yes. Unfortunately, that's really common. The little message on card 42 says that the average age of exposure to porn is 10 to 12 years old and continues to drop to younger and younger ages as time goes on. And that's amazing to me to hear some of the guys talk about how um they discovered that or mm -hmm. sometimes even their parents just consumed porn in front of them yeah just the the damage that that causes just yesterday someone told me he was introduced by his older brother at 3 years old oh my gosh and he could still remember the exact scenes that he watched breaks my heart so much and that's why if we want to heal we got to heal the boy that's one of my favorite things that you say is that men aren't addicted to porn boys are mm -hmm. and so if we want to become 
mature men, sexually, emotionally, spiritually, we have to engage with that little boy within us who is still here all these years later. He needs to be welcomed. He needs to be understood. He needs to be embraced. He needs to be heard, validated, affirmed. And he needs redemption. <laughs> so that's why we talk a lot about the inner child. That's why we we don't just say, uh, you know, think differently and you'll live differently. It's more It's more about giving ourselves what we needed but didn't get when we were kids. That's right. Yeah, it's easy to talk about that for a long time. Henry, we did it. We both answered the questions from all four levels of vulnerability. Yes. And, um, you know, it's interesting, different groups that I've just done trial tests with, um, depending on what they're comfortable sharing, uh, the different levels, even the first level may be more vulnerable than the fourth level. Um because that's not what they're accustomed to. Mm. Uh, and so your mileage with that, um, if you buy deck of man cards, may vary. You may look at some of the first 13 questions and go, oh, gosh, I don't want to answer that, but I don't mind sharing some of the last 13 answers. Um, and so it just depends on your group. And so it's interesting how different people respond to that. Yeah, that's a really good point. Whenever you're using the man cards, you can always skip any questions. There's no need to force it. If you don't feel comfortable or you're with a group of people that you don't know very well, um, stay with what feels appropriate for you, for them, and know that uh, you can always go deeper <laughs> if you really want. Um, yeah, it was surprising to me today how even those first questions could go really deep and People use these in different ways. Originally, I was inspired to create man cards by Adam and Carissa King, also known as Dear Young Married Couple, and the card decks they created for married couples to become more intimately connected. And I thought, that's not just for married couples. Men need that. We desperately long for that in our friendships. We just feel powerless to create that kind of connection. And that's why the man cards exist. It's really easy. All you do is take turns answering questions. It gives you an excuse. It gives you an easy way to go deep or to go as deep as you would like. Yes. And there's a ton of ways to use it. There's not a right or wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done it where we've shuffled the deck and you don't know what level of vulnerability you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> you just draw a card and answer. And uh, that's kind of difficult if you're online. Uh, but one of the ways I did that online uh, is I had everybody in the group in Zoom raise their virtual hand and uh, we had picked somebody to go first. And when that person picked a number, they answered the question and then they called on another person. After you answered the question, you lowered your hand so that everybody who hadn't been chosen had their hand up. So if I went first and I called on Drew to go second, then Drew could choose to answer the question that I answered or he could choose to draw another card. Um, and so that allowed them to choose a level of vulnerability that they were comfortable with instead of being in with the person previous. Uh, and some of those guys, some of those guys, they went in deep fast. They were like 51, 52. And I was like, oh, my stars. Are you really <laughs> sure you want to answer that? Um, but it allowed them to change and to not say I'm not comfortable because at that point, you don't know if you're just trying to expose different cards in the deck just to get more variety. Um, but you can go around the circle and have everyone answer the same question. And so there's tons of different ways to do that, whether you shuffle the deck or whether you call out numbers. Um, and each set from the surface to the deep end, there's 13 cards in each section, each level of vulnerability. And so you kind of know what you're picking when you pick that number. Uh, and so there's different ways to do that. Uh, and no one has to be shamed uh, for not wanting to answer a specific question. That's so cool. You can come up with all kinds of creative ways to use these cards. You can use them on a road trip. I did that with some men from my church. You can use it with your small group online or in person. You can even use it in marriage. I think the man cards mostly 
are appropriate for couples too. I mean, a lot of those questions would be great for couples. Um, we've just designed them to be specifically for men and for men who are going deeper in friendship. That's right. So if you would like to get a hold of this brand new resource that we are sharing with the world, go to getyourmancards.com. Yeah, you can get them there. Uh, that'll take you to the link on Amazon. Uh, so you don't have to search for it. And you can download that and start using it in person or virtually uh, with your groups of friends as well. Awesome. And if you do buy a card deck of man cards on Amazon using the link getyourmancards.com, please leave us a review, which will allow man cards to come up when people try to search for them and let them know if this is actually a great thing that they should buy or not. So all reviews would be much appreciated. Thank you so much for your support. If you do buy a deck and uh, let's help men go deep. That's right. Gentlemen, take a moment to dream with me. Imagine a world where men feel less lonely, more connected and more empowered to have deep, meaningful friendships. Imagine a world where conversations like the one that Henry and I just had are not the exception, but the norm. Imagine yourself knowing other men more deeply and being fully known. That's why we created these cards. If you believe in that vision, go to getyourmancards.com and let's start going deep. <laughs> Henry, what is your favorite thing about friendship? My favorite thing about friendship is knowing that I'm not alone, that even though the details may be different, we're all very similar uh, in the things and just being known in that and being remembered for those things uh, is so incredibly awesome. Yes, it is. Man, Henry, thank you so much for being on the podcast. You're welcome, Drew. Thanks for having me, man. My pleasure, man. And for everyone else out there, always remember, you are God's beloved son. In you, he is well pleased. Mm -hmm.